think we're all here. So welcome those of you who are online and welcome those of you who are here. You've doubled my number since last time, so thank you for coming. And now um, we've got a few people online too. Um, I also um, am recording uh, the, uh, the service so that I can send to some people who are in different time zones and different places in the world. So um, it's kind of cool. We've got a much far, farther reach than just this room or just this, all of this technology that you see set up. So hopefully it's going to run smoothly today. I had a, um, a friend who um, comes to my meditation class who bought me this really cool rocket ship speaker uh, microphone thing and a webcam, so that's supposed to be better. And I'm um, hoping I have everything all right, and if Mercury Retrograde doesn't mess with us, we'll be good. Yeah. Is it 26th yet? <laughs> Actually, today is, is the 26th. It is. It is. It is. Oh, so, um, welcome everyone. Thank you for coming. I'm really glad that, you're, uh, that you chose to spend your afternoon here. I'm, I'm uh, really pleased about that. This is the second uh, service that I've had here in Grace Chapel, and um, the, um, the mystical Christian tradition might look a lot like other things that you've seen in a church setting. Um, the, the big difference, I think, is that the, the mystical tr Christian tradition is a contemplative Christian tradition, so it's more based on the inner experience, even though we will be doing some things that are outer, like praying and maybe singing and we'll be receiving communion. The experience is to, um, or the hope is, that the experience here will open your heart, open your mind, open your spirit to the presence of God that's around us and in us all the time, and through that experience that you'll gain a um, easier, closer, more accessible relationship with the Spirit so that you can um, live in the Spirit all the time. And that's one of the reasons why um, Grace Chapel is the name of this chapel because when you live in the Spirit, then grace is moving in you and through you all the time and there are miraculous things that happen in life and connections and all kinds of lovely things. So um, what else do I want to say about it? So we're going to do a, a series of things. We're going to listen to some music that you might recognize, and then we're going to I'm going to guide you in a meditation before we start the actual service. And then there'll be a. This is Phyllis who's trying to get on my yeah. service. Hi, Phyllis. Hi, I'm in the chapel. How are you? Did you did you get to get on, or do you want to get on? Okay, I didn't, I didn't get that, but um, thank you for telling me, and we have a bunch of friends here in the chapel, so I just want to make sure it wasn't a technical problem, but are you okay? What happened? Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Are you sure you don't want to join us? This might be just the right time to do that. You don't have to. This is Phyllis. She has a good friend who's in hospice in these times. So mm -hmm. she's praying for her. Hi, Phyllis. Everybody said hi. She was here last time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll say a prayer for Willie. And if you want to join in, go on my Facebook page and I put a link there. Just double click on that link and you should be able to, it should pop right up on my computer. And I'll call you later, okay? Okay. All right. It's a good friend she's had from since childhood. Um, who's, um, who's, she, she knew he was ill, but he's uh, just uh, in the last stages of his, of his life and his illness. So we'll be sure to include him in our prayers. Willie, she calls him Willie. Yeah. Um, so we're going to do uh, a few things, and then I'll um, do meditation, and then I'll leave this, the service, and we'll do communion together as well. So... Let's, uh, let's begin with an opening prayer since we just got this news. I think it'd be good to put our hearts on that first. Okay. Oh, Heavenly Creator God, we thank you for light and life. We thank you for the love which moves from you and into us and through us. We pray now for your love and light to come over Phyllis and her friend Willie and all those who know them, that they would feel your presence, your comfort, and your peace that they would know the reality of your being in this life and in the next. Their souls might be at peace in this time of transition. We pray that all sick people, all dying people, all hungry and scared people, all lonely people would also feel your presence. Grant this desire of our hearts 
O Holy Creator, O Jesus and Mary, that our hearts might bring to them what they need. We thank you for answering our prayers and for being here among us today. We pray to have our hearts opened to be moved by love, to be simplified by it, that we might attune ourselves with the spirit that is so available, so willing to help us, so comforting and strengthening. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So this, uh, the song choice I chose for the beginning of uh, our meditation today may sound a little bit unusual, but I'm sure it will sound very familiar. Um, so I hope you enjoy it. And when the song is over, I'll um, stand up and lead us in a meditation. Um, we'll take it from there.
remain with your eyes closed. And let yourself tune in to your heart, to your heart of hearts that is both moved by desire for a connection with God and with other people. Your heart, which had a sincere desire and sincere compassion for Phyllis and her time of sorrow. Tune into this heart inside of you that God gave you. The heart God gave you to receive God's love and to give God's love. To be an instrument of love. Gather all of your conscious awareness together at your heart and feel the sincerity, the beauty of it, the gratitude that rises up in it when you ponder the blessings in your life, when you ponder or experience the presence of God around you and in you the joy that wells up from your spirit, when you feel the movement of God's spirit in and around you, the miracle of life and love, the sweetness of grace. Let go of your thinking mind, let go of all of your earthly worries and cares, and let yourself sink deeply into your heart, into your spirit, into the quiet place inside of yourself, the quiet place where your breath resides, where there is peace and stillness, <coughs> where there is an opportunity to hear the still, small voice of God which is always trying to get our attention, always wanting to be united with us in all that we think and say and do. Let yourself sink deep inside to that place of rest, that place of healing and unconditional love. This ground of your being, this spirit in you, your soul and your home, this is the place where God comes to greet you, to hear your concerns and your prayers, to fill you with peace and wisdom. Relax into it. Breathe into it. And let the weight and burdens come off your shoulders, off your body, off your mind. sinking ever more deeply into yourself and into the presence of God which surrounds us. Into God who is the source of life. sinking deeply inside, below the concerns of earthly life, deeper and deeper, and here in the quiet space inside. Take a moment to voice your concerns, 
for yourself and others, for our world, for our planet. The sincere concerns of your heart, give them over to God now. As you empty yourself of concerns and prayers, breathe deeply and relax into the silence and receive the response of the Spirit. The peace, the rest, the expansiveness, the warmth, and the light which comes when we relax into God's presence. See yourself being filled with these things throughout your body, your mind, your heart, through your whole being, washed over by peace, by love, filled with light, with the warmth and vibration of life and light and love. Relax into it. Open to receive it. And let go of any thought or concern that you might have. Any doubt or fear any shame or unworthiness, let those things go and accept the presence of our God who is always present to us. Accept the light of Christ as it comes forth from your being and fills you up, making all things new in you. The 
the unending flow of God's love fill you to overflowing. Making of your spirit a shining light, a place of comfort and solace for all those that you encounter. Making each of us the little Christs of the earth. Who carry the qualities of our Lord, of our God. If you find yourself distracted, just relax again with your breath. Back into the easy, restful space inside of you. Trust in God's love and care for you. God, our ultimate comforter, protector, lover, friend. Feel that truth in every part of your being. And let your heart delight in how much you are loved. the natural joy and gratitude spring forth in your heart. That our creator and our source is love and that we were created for love. Let that knowing fill your whole being and let it imprint upon your mind and your heart and your soul the reality of God's love for you, for every being. That you might remember this moment of connection. That you might come back to it in times of doubt or fear, of worry, of insecurity, that you might anchor your consciousness here in the peace of God's presence. Let your heart be light. Let us once again greet our Creator in our hearts as we join in prayer. Oh, Heavenly Creator, we thank you for your presence and for your peace which passes understanding. We thank you that we can tune into you, the stillness and reality of your love, your presence in and around us, between us among us. Help us to stay attuned to you. 
that through your presence and your love, we would be more loving, more kind and compassionate and connected. Help us to remember you when we forget, when we get busy and distracted. Call us to you often. We are so grateful to be part of the great plan of love in the earth. We pray to align our hearts with your will, align our hearts with your grace, that we might be your instruments. Our hearts are grateful and glad to know that this is available to us. We thank you and we give our hearts to you above all things that you might fill them with all of the qualities of heaven and that these things would bear good fruits in us as we move through this life you have given us. Bless all those who we are concerned for. Bless this beautiful earth that you have given us. Bless every being on it. May your peace and love prevail here, in each of us and in all beings. We ask this and receive it now in Jesus' name. In the name of the Creator, the Mediators, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Open your eyes when you're ready. Hi, Olivia. Hi. Hi. Would you mind just hitting the mute button on your side? So that, yeah, thank you. That way, just hit the mute on your sound because otherwise we can hear what's happening in your room. Thank you. Hi. Welcome. We just finished the meditation. Um, We're all very chilling now after that. Mm -hmm. So um, I wanted to share with you today about um, a particular prayer, which is the 23rd Psalm. And um, it's on the inside of your little bulletin thing. And I'd like to read it, and then I'd like to have us read it together. So I'll read it once, and we'll read it together, and then I'm going to talk to you a little bit about this prayer. Um, the Psalms are a book um, in the Old Testament that was originally um, thought to be mostly written by David, uh, by King David, but there's some question about that. I'm not really a biblical scholar, so I don't really get into that very much. I just love the psalm and it works. So, um, But the, um, the Psalms were originally songs of praise for God, so you can think about it that way when you hear it. So the 23rd Psalm says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for God's name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of my Lord forever. Amen. Well, let's say it together. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for God's name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. 
Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of my Lord forever. Amen. So uh, many times in Christianity, um, these kinds of prayers um, become rote for people. People memorize them, and you know them, and you say them really fast, and you Okay, I said that, Lord's Prayer done, Hail Mary done, Psalm 43 done. Um, and, you know, the Christian mystical tradition is a contemplative tradition, which means that we slow down. We slow down and feel things. Um, God works in an energy that is different from our worldly, everyday energy. And so, in order to tune into that, we have to get our, our hearts on right, get our spirits settled, and then tune into what is it that, what is it that we want from God? What, what is it that we know from God? And oftentimes prayers can help us to do that. To if we really read them and say them, we can, they can be a, a part of our, um, you know, spiritual toolkit to get ourselves in the right space so that we can feel the presence of God in us and around us. So I love this prayer um, because it is um, a prayer of um, surrender to God, a prayer of faith and acknowledgement that God's got us. God's got us and there's nothing we can do about it. God, God's got us in life and in death and in hardship and in joy all the time. God's got us. And also, the, the sweetness of this psalm is, is so beautiful to me and so refreshing to the spirit to think of God as our shepherd. And um, I have a picture of Jesus in my dining room holding the, the lamb. And um, actually, there's one of Mary with baby Jesus and the lamb right there, too. Um, and if we think of ourselves as the, the lambs of God, Jesus was called the lamb of God, but if we think of ourselves as the lambs, then we need a shepherd. And that is someone who loves us and cares for us, even in our vulnerability, in our weakness, in our not knowing, in our childishness or childlikeness, um, that God is leading us that way. And the next line says, I shall not want. So... That's another level of relaxing into, not only has God got me, but I'll never have want for anything. If I remember that God has me, I won't, I won't want for anything. That doesn't necessarily mean you'll never have any challenges in life, but there's certainly the wanting of things that are not material, the things that are not physical. Those wants will be taken care of and, and will be comforted and strengthened even in the challenges that are of the physical world. So let's, let's imagine that we are that lamb and we don't want for anything and we have a shepherd to guide us and the shepherd makes us to lie down in green pastures and leads us beside the still waters and restores our soul. Isn't that relaxing? Everything we need, all of our, all of our physical needs taken care of, our spiritual needs taken care of, and when we are relaxed like that, we're going to be like little lambs or like little children, as Jesus reminds us to be. And the psalm says, he leads me in the path of righteousness for God's name's sake. Because when we are like children, simple, trusting, loving, our actions, our words, our thoughts are going to reflect that. And that is going to be um, bring, uh, testify to God's love and bring glory to God's name. So we're going to do things that are loving and kind and all the things that Jesus recommends. The fruits of the Spirit are going to bloom in us and then people are going to say, look at that, I see God's face on that face. I, I feel God's hand in that hand. I hear God's voice in those words. Um, I feel God's presence and comfort in that kindness. And so that is the way that we can be continuators of God, continuators of Jesus and Mary in the earth. So our being, you know, I'm sure you've heard the saying, we're made in the likeness and image of God. So our being is made of love, by love, and for the purposes of love. So when we remember that and we relax into it, it's our natural state. We don't have to strive after it. We don't have to work hard for it. We have to relax and remember and tune in so that then when we are moving about the world, that's moving very fast and is not very tuned in most of the time and not very subtle most of the time, we are moving in a whole other realm, whole other energy. That is the energy of grace. It means I'm hooked up with God first and foremost, and then I'm going to go out in the world with that as my source of energy in life. 
not um, all the things that the world wants us to think about, achievements or activities or, you know, how many, how many of this or that you've accumulated, whatever it is that the world wants you to, to judge yourself on. So then it goes on to say, to talk to our next concern, which is, oh, that's all well and good that you love me, God, and that you're going to guide me, but I'm scared because death is coming for me and other people, and I don't know what to do about that, and um, there's bad stuff in the world. So then, of course, we get the next part, which is, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies, thou anointest my head with oil. So God not only is leading us in this beautiful life of no want, but also protecting us from the real harms and evils of the world, and being with us even in death. So we, we heard a little bit this morning about death, this afternoon about death. Um, Phyllis's friend is dying, and I happen to work with people who are dying as a hospice chaplain. And, you know, death is a scary thing for people who, who haven't tuned into God. Because we're, when, our, when our body leaves us, that place that we go to inside of us is our soul, which is eternal. And the more facility we have with being one with our soul, the less we're going to fear death. Because we're just going back to that, that great being that created us. Unique as we are, individual souls, beautiful, made by God, all different. But then all part of the same source and all carrying that same source inside of us. So relaxing into that means that when you're in the valley of the shadow of death, you don't fear. Why would you fear if you already know where you're going, if you already have experience going there? <coughs> well, certainly there are people who fear that, and when I, when I am with people who fear that, I pray for them, I encourage them, I comfort them, I do what I can to help them relax into the transition that's happening in their body, which is, you know, it's a big transition like birth. It's going to be a little freaky sometimes, right? It's going to be like, okay, I have a body, I'm not going to have a body anymore, who am I going to be without this body? This is the one I know right now. You know, by design, our consciousness on the earth is fairly limited in, by our physical form because we're here to learn how to love. And so we get this body in our life, and we're, we're meant to be learning how to use it to love. So we're kind of, uh, we're stuck on the stage of our life until God calls it. <laughs> until God says, okay, drop the curtain now. We're done with this part. Now come on back and let's see how that went. And... Um, you know, God's rod and staff, I, I always think about um, in uh, Lord of the Rings, what's that guy's name, is it, is it Merlin, the, 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 the mm -hmm. magician, what's his name, Gandalf, yeah, he puts the big staff down, and he says, thou shalt, you shall not pass, and um, I think about that as like the rod and staff, the protection that we have when we align ourselves with God, and it doesn't mean that we have to be consciously aware of that every moment of our life, that's not what it means. It means that we've said to ourselves and to God in us, I love you, I, am, I, I know who you are, I thank you for my life, and I want you to be the one that is with me. I trust you to protect me. I don't need to be afraid. I trust you to strengthen me, to comfort me, to guide me. I don't need to worry about those things. They're not, um, there aren't any uh, emergencies here. And even if we forget that, if we've done the job of, of doing that and we continue to go back to that knowing over and over again, even if we have moments of fear, God's still with us. So we don't have to think we failed God if all of a sudden, oh, I got afraid or worried or whatever other thing that we do as humans, you know, we're, we're forgetful we are. That's why it's recommended that we do something regularly to remember, because we're forgetful. God prepares the table before us in the presence of our enemies, which means that we're blessed even if, even if those who might be against us in their, in their ignorance, their darkness, their fear, whatever it is, they, um, they will also, if they're open to it, see that our life is full of grace. And that might make them mad, um, or it might make them curious. You know, why, why is it I can say something mean to you and it doesn't bother you? That would make someone curious, right? Why is it that, that uh, Jesus on the cross could say, you know, forgive them, Father, they know not what they do? That's going to make some people stop and think. So when we live the, the fruits of the Spirit, people notice that, and it makes them ponder, and it also makes them stop a little bit and reminds them that there's another way to be. And, and God anoints our head with oil. That's a blessing. It's a blessing saying, you're mine. 
in mind, and I've, I've got you. My cup runneth over. So when we were doing the meditation, having ourselves filled with that knowledge, it, it's a, an unending source of love. God is an unending source of love. When we fill ourselves with love and become a, um, a fountain of that love, it comes out of us, and when we stay tuned to it, it comes out of us endlessly. So our cup's running over with that energy, with that love, with that peace, with that presence that we can then share with people. Not because we're so darn good, just because we said yes to it, because we looked toward it and looked for it until we felt it in our being, and then we bring it to other people naturally. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of my Lord forever. That's nice. And amen, which is also the root uh, for amen and om, are the same word, and they they are um, kind of like the name of the sound of God. And amen also can mean so be it, or is done, or kind of that the kind of uh, um, seal on. I know this to be true. I know this to be true. I trust it's true. So I love this psalm, and I, I put a little insert in here with the Lord's Prayer and the Saint Francis Prayer, which are equally powerful and beautiful prayers. And we will say the Lord's Prayer as part of the communion, so I put the one that I use in there so that you can go by that one if you like to say that loudly. Um, so the thing I wanted to talk about a little bit today is relaxing into God's will, because many people say they'd like to know what God's will is for them or what their purpose in life is or why they're here on the planet. Um, you know, when we get to a certain level of conscious evolution in our being, we have these natural curiosities. What is life? Why am I here? What part do I play in it? What am I supposed to be doing? Um, am I doing it? Um, am I fulfilling my purpose? Am I doing God's will? And it's not a super difficult thing for people who are good hearted to say, I want to do God's will, but the, or I want to fulfill my purpose. But the question is, how do we know what that is in any given moment or in our life in general? What do we, what do we, rely on for the knowledge of what is my purpose or what is God's will for me. So in mysticism, in the contemplative life, the practice of meditation and prayer and devotion, um, the receiving of the communion and the sacraments are all aids to creating a relationship with God, with the Spirit, that is like a conversation, a personal relationship that's not just, I'm going to pray for God to reveal God's will for me and hope that I, that I see it. Which is a, not a bad prayer to have at all. But the, the, um, the movement of that relationship can be from you as someone who's faithful and prayerful to you as someone who's in communication with the Spirit, inside your being, talking, praying, receiving answers, praying, receiving images, praying, having feelings and knowing and wisdom that rise up in you that's not just um, hopeful or faithful, although hope and faith are required to get there, but the relationship with God is an internal relationship with the source of everything. So, of course, it knows everything. And it knows why it created you. And it knows what it wants from you in any given moment. The question is, do you have the curiosity and the courage to ask what that is and to find out what it is? And so, why would someone not want to do that? Well, they want to do their own thing, right? They think, well, I'll live my life, I'll be a good person, and I'll do my own thing. You know, as long as I'm a good person. And I think being a good person is a really good thing. Don't get me wrong. I think it's a really good thing to have some, what do I do? How do I be a good person? You know, follow, let me follow the rules, the commandments. Let me follow, um, you know, what makes good sense to me. We try to be kind to people. Those are all great things. But that's different from doing God's will for you personally. So there's a mystery in that. The mystery is... We have the rule book, we have the Bible that's kind of the rule book for living, and it has great and wonderful things in it that make us think about how we relate to God, to each other, and to ourselves. And we should contemplate those things. We should spend time in prayer and meditation and reflection before we go to sleep. Thank you, God, for another day. Hope I get another one tomorrow. And how did I do? How did I do today? And reflect on our day. What did, what did it look like? What did it feel like? Where was love moving? Where was it not moving? What did God have in mind for me that I missed? Oh, I could have been more kind right there. I could have taken another minute there. Oh, I got impatient. Oh, I was in a hurry, and so I wasn't listening at all. 
Oh, I, had, I certainly had my own agenda today. This is what I'm doing today, God. Butt out. You know? So having our spirit attuned to the movement of spirit, which is in us already, then we can be moved along by it. What do I do now? What do I do now? What do I do now? So the being in the presence of God heals us and erases enough of our ego personality so that we want to know, we want to be in the flow of God's movement of spirit, we want to be used by God in whatever way God wants us to be used. Above our own personal, family, community, above all those things, we want first to be used by God. Now, it's very clear that God is going to use you in your community and in your family, in your relationships, in your work, because that's where you are. You know, you've got a life, and there, there's the life. Now, what we want to what we want to hope for is, God, come into my life and show me how to um, do your will, to love the way you would have me love in the life that I'm in. And let me know if there's something else I'm supposed to be doing. Let me know. Um, that's going to take some desire to know that and some quiet time to get in tune with that. Because I bet if I sat with any of you and said, what does your Monday look like for you right now? You would have a nice little list of times and places to be and people to see, right? What you've got to get done, blah, 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 your to-do list, maybe your grocery list, whatever. And if I said, did you check that with God? That would be a whole different way of approaching a day. So it's not that our agenda is going to be all whacked out because we check it with God. That is a fear that people have. Well, if I give it over to God, maybe I'll just won't get anything done. Maybe I won't even get out of bed. You know, what's going to happen if I give it over to God? But the, the beautiful thing is that we can bring our best effort. God, this is what I have on my agenda for tomorrow. Would you like to amend it? Would you like to edit it or rearrange it? For the sake of someone else, or maybe, and sometimes more difficultly, for my sake. Maybe God says, oh, no, 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 no. You're not pushing your way through another day tomorrow. Not another Monday where you're going charging out, going to take over the world. No, no, no. You're going to stay home and be with me. You're going to do this thing, or you're going to do this thing. You're going to see this person instead of doing that thing. So in order to be open to that, we have to have a lot more courage, I think more than faith, to say, am I going to be okay if God asks me to do something that's outside of the realm of my current understanding of myself and my life? What's going to happen? And when we, when, if you ever have a day where you have a really nice agenda set up for yourself and then something messes with it and everything goes to pot and then you're like, you're really stressed out and you're, you know, you really get cranky, right? I mean, one simple little thing, flat tire, you know, fender bender, Someone gets sick and you have to take care of them. I mean, we can just get totally torqued over that, right? We have, our, we have our things to do, don't we? Aren't those supposed to get done? So the first thing we can do is to relax into the changes that God offers us just as a normal part of our life and relax into saying, if this is coming to me, if I know God is good and I know God's got me and this is coming to me, then it has to be good for me and for other people. It just has to be. So if we start with that kind of understanding and knowing what's coming to me is good for me, it has to be because it's here. And since God's my shepherd and got, got my back, if it's here, it's good. And if we remember that, then we're going to go about receiving what God brings to us in a whole different way. With a curiosity like, oh, I wonder why this is happening today. I wonder why I need to meet that person. I wonder why my schedule was rearranged in this seemingly inconvenient way. <coughs> God, this is really inconvenient for me. I don't really want to change my schedule today. I have some things to get done. But if we say, wow, interesting. Why is this happening? I wonder what's going to come from it. Or I wonder how I'm going to be able to serve God or serve love because this thing happened. And um, when that's the beginning of saying, I am curious about what God's will is for me. Because God will create it right in front of you. You don't really have to go after it. You can resist it, but that usually causes suffering, right? Because if you get cranky and impatient, somebody's going to pay. Right? Somebody's gonna, someone probably that you really love and care about is going to pay for that. So to avoid that, first we change our focus to, if God's got me the way this psalm says, then whatever comes along, God knows it, God put it there, and God wants me to learn from it and to give in it. 
How, how can I best do that? And sometimes we'll be at a complete loss of how to do that. And then we have prayer to say, okay, I want to do this. I don't know how. I don't know how to be patient. I don't know how to be flexible. I don't know how to be spontaneous. I don't know how to be forgiving or whatever it is. How do we do that? And then God has an opportunity to work with you and teach you and stretch you into doing those things. And that last time I talked about the fruits of the Spirit. So there's nine fruits of the Spirit. Love, peace, joy, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. Those are the nine, nine uh, fruits of the Spirit. And the fruits of the Spirit grow in us and come, become ripe in us as we trust God to move in our life. We become more of all of those things. We don't have to say, this is my list of objectives, these nine, and I'm going to go about becoming more of those things. We can't really do that because if we're doing it from our own perspective, it's good to say, was I kind today, and how can I do that differently? But if we look at it like a task list, then it's going to be us striving again. Instead of relaxing into, God's going to show me how to be kind. God's going to move kindness through me, move gentleness through me, gracefulness all those things are going to be moved through me. I don't have to push and struggle and strain and make them happen. I have to relax. Okay, God, you want patience from me? you got to show me. What does patience look like right now? What does that look like? And because we have these minds that like to categorize everything, we think that we know in which moment God wants us to be practicing which one of those things. So then we get it all muddled up because we get our hand in there and it'd be better if we just said, all right, I don't, I don't know which one of those things. Move in me, God. Move in me and through me what it is you want me to do right now. Sometimes people misunderstand those words and they think that kindness always means sweetness and niceness. But kindness doesn't always mean that. Kindness sometimes can mean saying the truth directly. That can be kindness. So if our little human mind is trying to figure out in every moment and in every interaction, what is it supposed to be, what is it supposed to look like right now, we're probably going to mess that up. So if we, do, if we can be in a state of not knowing and say, I'm open to the movement of whatever you want to come into me, Lord, and whatever you want to come out of me, I'm open to that movement. Help me to be the instrument of that. Help me to relax into knowing that you're going to move something into me and it's going to happen and it's going to come out of me and it's going to, it's going to be good. Oh, there's someone coming on to uh, FaceTime. Um, I don't know who it is, though. Hello? Nope. I'm not sure who that is. I think I need a techno uh, assistant <laughs> for these things. Someone who can do all, do all that while I'm uh, doing other things, and so I don't lose my train of thought. Anyway, uh, that's basically what I want to say about God's will is that there's a whole um, you know, universe of um, possibility if we can relax into God's will and be curious about what it is. And so the practice of prayer and meditation helps us to open our heart and be curious, and then you know, we really need to pray just for the courage to say, okay, God, I do want to do your will. First, I'll need to know what that is. So I always tell God, like, make it loud and clear, God, because I, you know, a lot going on in my head and my life, so you better make it loud and clear if you want me to hear it. And, um, you know, be careful what you ask for, because then <laughs> you get very clear signs about what to do and what not to do. Um, and then the other part of it is that we have to relax into knowing that we are already loved, and we are already loved even if we're going to make a mistake. We're going to make mistakes. If our sincere intention is to do God's will, and our sincere intention is to love other people the way that God loves us, then, then um, God's going to give us, uh, you know, some free passes for our good intention mistakes. You know, we, we might make some of those. And God's going to cover us. He'll be covered. So we don't have to worry about that. We don't have to worry about being worthy of having God's will move through us or God's love move through us or that we're going to mess it up. We don't have to be worried that um, we've done some things that maybe we regret, and so we aren't therefore worthy to have that happen for us. If we have regretted something, we go like a child to God and say, I see that I did that, I feel, I feel bad, and I, I wish I hadn't done that, and I, I'll really try not to do that again with your help. Um, you know, we say in Spanish, ojalá, God willing, I won't do that again. <laughs> Um, help me to not do that again or to be more loving. And then we go on. We waste so much time worrying about the things that we do wrong and 
worrying about how am I going to do that right, that then nothing can move in us. Because our worry and our mind creating chaos and guilt and shame keeps the spirit from moving through us. We can't hear the spirit when we're in that state. So relaxing into what is God's will for me? What is my purpose? How do I know that? And in my experience, I get glimpses of the big picture of God's purpose for you. But mostly I get turn left, walk three places, turn right, do this now, go do this, do this. Very simple instructions that you move through your day. And it becomes quite simple to follow when you relax into, I don't know why. I don't know why God wants me to go to that store right now, but that's where I'm going. And then I find that I meet someone there who needs to talk to someone or to be received or whatever. And so it's all good. I don't know why. Oh, I woke up this morning. Oh, do this this morning. Okay, that's what I'll do. And when, when we can surrender into that, then we, we get to have the, the great fun of watching God use us and love people through us. And we can't really take any credit for it, except that we showed up. So God's talking to every human being all the time, wanting them to be closer to God and to be instruments of love all the time, every moment, every day. We have lots of opportunities to do it. If we miss an opportunity, just let's just say whoops. Whoops, I missed that one, so sorry. Is there something else I can do for you? You know, with our sincere intention to more and more be tuned in and aligned with what God wants for us. So, um, we're going to do communion, and the communion is um, a gift that God gave to us through Jesus' life to give us a little booster shot, booster shot of divinity, a booster shot of blessing and grace that, you know, Jesus recommends we take as often as possible because we're forgetful. We're human beings, we're forgetful. God knows our nature as human beings because God made us. And, you know, we can just, you know, be a little bit humble and say, yeah, I'm forgetful. I forget God a lot of times every day. I'd like to remember, and how can I remember? And so Jesus gave a lot of ways to remember. The Lord's Prayer is one of the ways he gave. That's part of our, uh, part of our community service. And when I say Jesus taught us to pray, and then I'll start the Lord's Prayer, you can say that a lot with me if you like. Um, and... You know, we can follow Jesus' example of um, praying and meditating and tuning in and trying to stay attuned to the Spirit. We can receive the blessing of the sacraments, which are, you know, big boosts of grace that come into um, when we say, I sincerely want to know God's will for me. I sincerely want to be have myself cleared out of all the things that are in the way of hearing God's will and doing God's will. And we kneel down and we open our hands we say, yes. I want that. I accept the grace. I accept the blessing. I accept the, the reality that this action is bringing something into my flesh body that's going to help me be more divine. So it's a little infusion or transfusion of, of uh, grace and the, the presence of Jesus and Mary in our being that helps us to, to do that. That's why Jesus left it for us. He knew we needed a lot of help. And that's why Jesus left the Spirit for us as well. You know, when he came and and uh, ascended into heaven, he said, don't worry, I'm leaving the comforter for you. The comforter, the advocate, we call it. The one who helps, to, helps us to hear what God wants for us. So that's our friend. So when we think of the Trinity, and my, my Grace Chapel sign has the Trinity, Celtic Trinity symbol. We think of God, the creator, the source of love. We think of Jesus and Mary as the mediators. And the Holy Spirit is what Jesus left for us so that we can feel in our own being the movement of that spirit that will guide us and protect us and lead us and comfort us. And so when we receive the blessing of um, baptism and communion, um, those things fire up the spirit in us. They fire it up so it's more intense, it's more palpable, it's more noticeable. It gets our attention more. And then it's easier to follow because we have that arise in us. So that's the, um, the blessing of the sacrament of communion. And it represents everything that Jesus came here to do on the earth. All in one little piece of bread and a sip of wine. So for those of you who haven't been here before, um, I'm going to kneel and say the prayers for the, uh, for the communion. And you can kneel if you'd like to, um, if, you, if it's comfortable for you. If that's not comfortable, you can sit. And then I'm going to, um, just so you all know, I'm going to uh, serve the sacrament to the people on the screen first. So you'll hear me say the prayer. And then I'll come to you, and if you just um, 
Um, if you're kneeling or sitting, you can have your hands up. This, this posture with your hands up is a posture of openness. You make out of yourself a chalice, a cup to receive what God has for you. And your heart can just be open. And um, You know, there's a prayer, I come to you, Jesus, without one plea. Without one plea. Just to receive the blessing that you have. You know, just open to receive. And then I'll come with the host and you can just stick your tongue out so I have a landing pad for the host. <laughs> and um, I don't have any rules about chew or don't chew the host, so whatever works. These kind of dissolve in your mouth, so, so not too hard. Um, I'll give you the host, I'll put my hand on your head and say a prayer. And then I'll do the same with the wine. Um, you know, I'll, I'll serve you the wine so you just open your mouth a little bit and I'll serve you the wine. Again, put my hand on your head and say a prayer. Um, and I'll do that for those of you online as well. Hi, Wendy. I see Wendy's joined us. And someone else I can't. Oh, okay. Um, so that's the um, that's how the communion happens here. I'm going to move these chairs out of the way so that uh, we all have space. So I'll kneel if you like. Oh, Heavenly Father, Mother God, Master Jesus, and Blessed Mother Mary, we thank you for your presence here today. We turn our hearts and minds to you once again to contemplate your sacrament of communion to open our hearts to the Eucharistic blessing that you offered us, this magnificent feast of the Spirit. We pray that we would be simple as we come to you to receive it, that our hearts would be light and open, that we would offer our burdens and worries up to you, and you would replace them with your grace. We thank you, O Holy Ones, for leaving this beautiful sacrament for us, for our benefit. We're so happy to receive it in your names, name of the Creator, the Mediators, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Mother, Father most glorious, and Christos most high, through the great masters of earth, Jesus and Mary, we beseech thee to absolve us of all error and misgiving. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. O Lord of earth, thou grantor of all prayers, it is my word that this bread shall be transmuted into the flesh of thy body and thy mind, being transformed, I commend it in your memory for the forgiveness of sins.
glory unto the Creator for its power. Glory unto the mediators for their life. Glory unto the Holy Spirit for its nature. For thus is transformed the essence of earth and heaven. Amen. Into the blood of our most glorious Lord of earth, Jesus Christ. Amen. O God of creation, through thy holy word and through the power granted unto me over the life and the death of creation, do I commend myself unto the transformed wine and blood of our Lord Jesus for the raising of the consciousness. And may now the Holy Spirit descend through it and infuse it with life eternal. Amen. For those of you online, Wendy, Olivia, Kristen, Joy, partake of the body of Jesus and know that by the fruits of your labors, you are absolved of all past error and misgiving. Thus you are a partaker of the life through Christ Jesus. In Jesus and Mary's names, this is done name of the Creator, the Mediators, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
And for those of you online, Olivia, Wendy, Kristen, Joy, drink of the blood of Jesus, which is infused with the essence of the great Christos above. Now go forth and let your light shine before all. In Jesus and Mary's names, this is done. In the name of the Creator, the Mediators, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We thank you, most holy ones, for the blessing of this sacrament. We thank you for your compassionate mercy on our humanity and for the many graces that you pour into us, restoring us to your love, to your truth, to our own essence as God's children, as God's instruments. We ask that you remain in us that we would feel your presence and remember you in all things. In Jesus and Mary's names, this is done. In the name of the Creator, the Mediators, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. So the last thing I'd like to do today is teach you a, a little song you have it on the back of your uh, program there. It's a very short uh, song that you can sing to yourself to help you to remember and to ask for God's help in, in letting God move through you. So I'll sing it once and then we'll all sing it together. Some of you online might have received it, but if you didn't, I'll send it to you. Um, this is how it goes. God of my being, I call you forth to animate my claim. I give my heart and mind to you. Take me in your light, in your embrace, and let me stay in you. And let me stay. God of my being, I call you forth.
coming online. So lovely to have you here with us. Thank you. I'm going to turn I'm going to turn the camera so you can see the other folks, okay? Hold on a second. All right. So here they are, David and Sharon and Regina and Gail here in the chapel. And moi. Thank you for joining us. Blessings to everyone. <laughs> 